claims that Joe Biden and the Democrats in Congress, they're standing with the Mexican drug cartels. They're standing with the invasion that is targeting our state. We've seen 9.6 million illegal immigrants enter this country since Joe Biden became president, and this is deliberate. He is cooperating, not just cooperating, but he's literally in partnership with these cartels. We need to let Greg Abbott do his job, which is to put up the razor wire. I stand with Texas. We've got to secure this border. Fueled by powerful beliefs and intensifying rhetoric, a literal standoff has developed on the border, pitting the Biden administration and federal forces against Governor Greg Abbott and Texas troops. At issue, a narrow Supreme Court ruling backing President Biden's authority to take down razor wire deployed by Texas as a deterrent against illegal crossings, specifically at a state-controlled Riverside Park in Eagle Pass. The rub, the Governor Abbott is refusing to allow it, defying the president and invoking our state's right to defend itself against invasion. This is an invasion by people we don't know who they are, where they're coming from, or the danger they may pose. And so, as two heavily armed factions face off awaiting orders, 25 Republican governors issued a joint letter of solidarity with Texas, with some offering to dispatch their own troops to support the Lone Star State. Meantime, a deal to dramatically boost border security in exchange for billions in military aid for Ukraine and Israel is in serious trouble. Panel, that's because former President Trump has signaled to his supporters in Congress he'd rather blow up the bargain and let the chaos continue, presumably to preserve widespread public fury until the November 5th election. With that, let's start our conversation. Uh, Charles Blaine, is Donald Trump trying to blow up a border deal? Um, I, you know, I think he's trying to do whatever it takes to get him over the hump and, and get him through this primary, which he's going to get through easily and become president in November. And so whatever outcome needs to happen to get that, I think, is what he's, what he's trying to do. But what's interesting about this is they're trying to claim that Texas doesn't have a right to do this. I mean, this is the same framework that cities and states who claim to be sanctuary cities use when they want to justify bringing people in. Well, Abbott is using it to justify keeping people out because it is an invasion. What I find crazy is that Congress is so ineffective that they can't even couple spending from border if border is such an issue that 25 governors half of the country are signing on to a letter saying it's that important and they can't decouple other issues from that just to address that that just shows how ineffective it is all right let's go to one of our two lawyers on the panel uh bill king what do you make of this this is uh, crazy that we have a federal state standoff with armed people down there so this is a lot of political theater is what <laughs> this is uh, I saw some video uh, last night when we were, I was researching for the show a few miles up the river you know people are crossing like crazy and Texas law enforcement people were loading them onto buses to be taken to processing centers so you know this is just political theater for a national election that's coming up um, I think it's sort of interesting uh, for the last two or three years, I've just been in a complete quandary to understand either the policy or the politics behind Biden's, you know, uh, border. I mean, it, it, neither one make any sense. And uh, I talked to people yesterday that said that Biden's internal numbers show he's down 32 percent on the border itself. And that suddenly sent panic off. I don't know what took him so long. And that's why you see this sudden pivot where we need to make a deal. I'm going to get tough. I'm going to close the border. I think it's a little late to make that case, but that's what he's going to try to do. You agree with that? Well, I, I, Bill's brilliant, <laughs> always. But uh, look, I, I like you. Yeah. <laughs> here's, what's, here's what's going on here. The Biden compromise they're talking about in Washington, it's not closing the border. They're going to propose to put a numerical limit on the number of people who can come into the country illegally every day. And I think the number was being banning about is 5,000. Well, that's over a million people a year. So the whole system, the, the bill's a joke. Trump button in, he just needs to shut up. I mean, seriously, he needs to let Congress and the Republicans in Congress do what they want to do. But the idea, it needs to be delayed because it helps them politically. I don't know whether that's true or not. Uh, Biden can close the border tomorrow. Instead of having his Border Patrol be an escort service, he can actually have them enforce the law. But he's not doing that. And the motivation, I think, is to, it, I think that replacement theory idea, it's to bring people in who they think will be captive to the, the left wing in this country and vote for them because they're losing blue collar workers. Chell, no one's against immigration. I think there's a lot of people who are against uncontrolled 
illegal immigration. We're not talking about the people on the other side who are trying to get in here. What's your take as you watch this unfold? Well, first of all, I think Charles called the election in November that Trump is, is going to be yeah, elected. So I, I, let's not, <laughs> let's not forget that. I can't get that out of my head right exactly. now. Exactly. Exactly. Get that out of head. Well, here, here's what I'd say. $11 billion has been spent on Operation Lone Star. To what end? And we're talking about ra razor wires. And yes, maybe along the border there are people coming in, but let's us not forget those families and children who are desperate to come over for a best be, better life the Republican strategy they're very good at words right words like cartel words like invasion that get into the public consciousness there has to be and we always go back to that safe and responsible path to citizenship there are so many immigrants who want to come over from Central America from South America from Mexico to have a better life for their kids and their families why don't we figure out that so that we can curb this tide? All right, tomorrow. Charity I saved you for last. I appreciate it. <laughs> Charity begins at home. Why don't we figure out whether 11 billion can help the families who want to do better, who already have been there, been born here? Why can't we do something about the inner cities in Chicago, LA, DC, Detroit, Houston, Memphis, Florida, everywhere? Why can't we do something about that? That's what they need to be looking at. You said they want to come over here for a better life. Where's the opportunities for those that are here? What COVID did to this country and to this nation, to those who are already marginalized, who still have not gotten back up. We need to do that. I'm telling you, I said it before and I'll say it again, even though his ass lost in court, now he got to pay that lady 83 million and he tried to appeal it, he gonna lose. His policy at the border was right. It was right. You cannot allow and continue to allow anybody and everybody who wants to come in here because all skin color, all skin folk ain't kin folk, and you don't know what their true mission is. So yes, they need Abbott. Damn, this is gonna choke me. He right about this. He does need to monitor the Texas border.